very well could be. I told you, don't make him tell the serial story, but you had to go ahead. <laughs> Lloyd, y you were in am charge I, for the I last two calls. Decoration? I mean, I, I, I value your time too much. I screwed up. <laughs> you are now, I will shut, I will enjoy my sucker for the last two calls. We're a little bit over time. I know food's going to be showing up soon. So we'll let you go through this because uh, an anonymous caller Ooh. from Texas will prove. will prove that there is a God. It's Hopefully all you. Hang up whenever you want. Okay. How do I how do I do that? The the red drop button. That one right there. Okay. Okay. Anonymous, you're here. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Pretty good. I can hear you. Yeah. Oh boy, it was painful listening to all that. I know that was pretty bad, but hopefully you're here to save the okay. day with a logical reason as to why God definitely, definitely, definitely exists. It is of course, of course. Okay, I wanna um. Just ask both of you guys one simple question. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay. J just because we've we've eaten up a whole bunch of time already, so it, uh -huh. it shouldn't necessarily it shouldn't be a, about a, you asking us a question. You have proof that God exists. Yes. So what is it? Uh, the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> no. That's exactly when I would have hung up, too. I mean, exactly. On the nose. All right, last caller for the show. Uh, Rob in Quebec, you're on with... Or Quebec. You're on with Matt yeah. and Lloyd. Oh, thanks for having me. I can can, I, guys can I say something? The guy there. That was, yeah, go ahead. Do you play Crokinole, Rob? Crokinole? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Oh, uh, are you sure you're from Quebec? Yeah, I'm from Quebec, but I never heard of Crokinole. Is that what is it? It's this wonderful finger flicking board game that's a cross between curling and shuffleboard, and it's like my new favorite thing. And I bought a board for us to play up here, but it's made in Canada, and it's like this Canadian thing. Uh, anyway, I was just having fun. Oh, that's interesting. No, that's interesting. There's a game up that I used to play when I was younger. It was called Mississippi. It's a long rectangular table with uh, wooden pucks. Would that be what we're talking about? That's closer to shuffleboard. This is a round disc, and so in the center there's yep. there's a, a hole just big enough for the puck to go in, and that's worth 20, and then there's a ring around that with some pegs that are 15, and then it's 10 and 5. Oh. But it doesn't matter. Regale us with something oh, to it. take our mind off the last few calls. Yeah, we need to regain our sanity <laughs> yeah, at this and point, and you are our savior. Yeah, yeah uh, no, I just want to bring up uh, <clears throat> Noah's Ark. Um, because I looked into it, and there's so much compelling evidence. And when you see the Turkish government having signs pointing to the site, and then when you have the measurements uh, aligning with what the biblical measurements are, and then you have these uh, marine uh, engineers uh, basically stating that it's a man-made structure because they're finding steel cables running perpendicular along the bottom of the hull, Steel. Uh, that's a bit of Whoa, did you say steel cables? R Rob, do you know how steel calls. is made? Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, you, you do realize that uh, even if Noah existed, and even if Noah built a boat, Noah didn't have access to steel, <laughs> right? Well, we think that, but there was meter meteorology back then. Now, I don't know what their, what their methods were, but uh, to say that it didn't exist, uh, we really don't know. But they did find uh, lots of cables going uh, perpendicular to each other all, all along that uh, structure. So <clears throat> that's uh, okay. That's so so, so let, let me let me just give you the biggest possible benefit of the doubt. The okay. Turkish government is not letting people go up and investigate what a lot. Uh, some... Oh no, they they no they, they they already did. They had people investigating it, and that's why they endorsed it. That's why they have signs pointing to the site. Uh, Rob. So they found well, some sticks. Do you do you believe so? Well, first of all, I think there's some been, been some confusion because when we were screening your call, we identified you as an atheist. Is that correct? Well, atheist. I grew up basically not paying attention to anything to do with uh, you know the Bible or any type of religion as such. You're an atheist uh, who believes in the, the story of Noah's flood. Well, there's a lot of... Yes, I do. Now now that I look into it, yes, there's lots of evidence for that. And do you believe 
that we don't, Noah's, we don't have time to go into that today you, because that'll take a long time to discuss that. Do, do you believe that Noah's flood was global? Yes, absolutely. Do, are you aware of the fact that there aren't enough water molecules on the planet to inundate the land, the Earth's crust? No, that's not true because under the crust, there's actually oh, five those, times so more the water water's than hidden the under the crust. Water combined. Isn't that where it would be anyway, according to gravity, under yeah, the crust? Actually, what happened is that the water came from under the crust and shot upward. It didn't come from the sky, it came from under. And then God hid it so that we wouldn't find it, so that we'd find the no, story no, God, outrageous. No, no, no. God didn't hide it. The fact that you're asking a question about where the water came from. Well, he, he, hid, came it, from, he hid it from the Egyptians, whose civilization existed before yeah. and after the flood and are completely unaware that the entire earth flooded. We have an item of clothing that is older than the flood is supposed to have been. There are trees that are older than the flood supposed to supposedly happen. Do you know what happens to trees when you submerge them? For any length well, of time. Well, the trees and all the, all the plant life in the trees actually turned into coal. But what, so why are the trees that outdate the date that the flood is supposed to have happened? And, and how did you know freshwater the, fish and saltwater you know fish... How do you know survive? that the trees outdate the flood? Because we can date them using scientific methods. Uh, what method? Would that be carbon dating? Well, that's one way because carbon dating is good till, till how many years, Rob? How many years can you go back with carbon dating? Are you, are you aware that carbon trees have rings? Carbon dating actually has been, has been debunked many times. Oh, my God. But th they said it was like a, a <sighs> late onslaught of nutters. Yeah. Am, am I misinterpreting this? So, unbeknownst to you, I actually went out on Twitter and said, hey, Lloyd's coming, <laughs> and I don't want him to have a terrible experience. experience so let's get some, like, batshit crazy calls in the end, and so they all called their friends. I mean, I mean the Noah's story... I, I I don't know how anyone can excuse it. There's just it, it, it unravels on so yeah. many different levels. You're really telling me that every land dwelling species, and there are literally millions, were squeezed into a box or into yeah. a. Uh, and when it was over, the marsupials made it to Australia. Yeah. Everything divided up, and then told told a compelling lie about it. And saltwater fish and freshwater fish somehow managed to survive in brackish water. Both of them make it through uh, so entire civilization. Oh well, you have to say carbon dating has been debunked. So. First of all, go to a study on radiometric dating, because it's not just carbon dating. There are a number of different uh, radiometric dating methods, and they overlap, and they overlap with other methods like tree dendrology and stuff like that. And so we can put together a good understanding of the timeline, both geological time. We can even get to astronomical time by observing things within our solar system and within our galaxy. Uh, when you say, and I, and I realize you're no longer on, I, I didn't care. I wasn't waiting for an answer from you personally. When you say carbon dating has been debunked, that's just wrong. No. What's been debunked is when carbon dating is used in certain ways, and you know how we showed when those results were flawed? By using other radiometric dating methods and other dating methods that can show a reliability. This is what happens when you have a statistical outlier and you have somebody who doesn't know fuck all about science, they throw out all the science. And what science does is it throws out the statistical outlier. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You, one interesting thing, if you have one of those, hey, here's a jar up here with gumballs in it. If you have one of those contests where you ask people to, to guess how many gumballs are in that thing. If you just have one person do it, who knows how close you're going to get. But if you had a thousand people guess and averaged it, you will almost get it dead on the nose. Because the wisdom of crowds which is this nebulous thing. It's not like we all know the answer or all of us kind of know the answer or whatever else. But on the whole, on the average, we are more likely to be right about some things, not everything, than we are to be wrong. That's not an appeal to popularity. That's just the way statistics work. Some people are going to look at that and, and be able to assess exactly how many of them are in there or pretty close. And some people are going to, there's a million gumballs in there. And somebody's going to say four. It is the science and mathematics that allow us to not only understand exactly how to calculate that, but how some people are better at estimating it than others, and how when you use a statistically large sample, you're gonna get closer and closer to accuracy, and why we should toss out the outliers. So if somebody walks in and said there's four in there, we toss that one out. If somebody walks in and says there's a million in there, we toss that one out. That's still just no guarantee we can get that right. That's not even really 
science in the same way that radiometric dating is. And so it's not the science that got tossed out. It's a result that was shown to be flawed. As I said earlier, when we found mistakes in science, it was always more and better science that did it. It is the single most consistently reliable method. It is not a pronouncement of truth. Science doesn't make declarations of truth. It just says this is the best model based on the evidence that we currently have. And then we can revise it. That's why I rely on science. Doesn't mean I put my faith in science. It doesn't mean I believe everything that somebody says is science. The one of the worst things about the internet and, and the access that everybody has to all this information is science reporting. If you're a journalist and you're reporting on science, just fucking stop. I would rather see boring headlines from actual scientists that don't misrepresent the facts than whatever clickbait, ooh, we found the God molecule, the God particle, the God this, the Eve that. It's ridiculous, and I know it's because you're trying to sell papers, you're trying to sell magazines, but you're not doing science any benefit, and as we can see from callers today and callers over the last 15 years, you are doing a gross disservice to the community at large because people, some of them will recognize, as one of our callers did, maybe they don't understand this science well enough, and yet somehow they still feel compelled and qualified to make, reach conclusions even while acknowledging they don't understand. And that's the fault of science journalists, that's the fault of science educators, that's the fault of anybody who's putting forth this has been debunked at, when we're talking about an outlier. Oh, this has shown that there's a God when it hasn't. Set the clickbait aside. Let the scientists write their own damn titles. And even if nobody understands them and it's boring, even if they can't even get it from the synopsis of the paper, that would still be better than leading people to think and, and running around using the word quantum all the time. Ooh, it's quantum this, it's quantum this. It's obnoxious that we live in a world where we have more access to information than ever, where we have more access to better information than ever, and there are flat earthers. There are people who think that a global flood is possible. There are people who buy into every stupid fucking notion under the sun because, perhaps... There's too much information and no way to tell what's a reliable source and what isn't. And no, I'm not suggesting we put a government in charge and this is rubber stamped or anything else. But at least stop with this, the Reader's Digest clickbait highlighted summaries that are leading people to think that they have an understanding of something when they clearly don't. 